We're going on a drop thumb deep dive today, and we're gonna ask the question, what is drop thumb? We're gonna answer the question, why drop thumb? I'm going to give you three ways to improve your drop thumb, and then I'm gonna finish this video off with exercises designed to do just that. Welcome to Banjo Quest. Now we are preparing over on Patreon, my Banjo Quest project, we are preparing for Monday, April 1st, this coming Monday, 2024. We're preparing because that's when my 12th banjo boot camp begins. That is seven days of live stream banjo exercises written specifically to help you level up your claw hammer skills and give you a deeper knowledge of the beautiful tuning that is double C. If you want in on that, if you want to join us, the link is in the description below. And if you can't make the live sessions, everything is archived and you get access to all the previous 11 boot camps. It's crazy, check the link in the description. I really hope I see you over there. The first thing we need to do is define what drop thumb is, and it's pretty simple. Normally, in the normal course of claw hammer, we are riding that fist string with our thumb. This is called a double thumbing pattern. This is sort of the nominal claw hammer stroke, but we are often faced with times when we need to drop that thumb to an inner string to activate a note on the upstroke that isn't the fifth. So let me demonstrate what I mean. This is nominal claw hammer. We're answering every downstroke with a note on the upstroke on that fifth string delivered by the thumb. A drop thumb pattern is when we drop that thumb down to an inner string. In this case, I'm gonna drop it to the second string. So I drop thumb, and then I do a ditty between so you can see the difference. Drop thumb, ditty, drop thumb, ditty. So I'm dropping that thumb to my second string and I'm activating it on the upstroke. So now that you know what a drop thumb is, why do drop thumbs exist? Well, I have two answers to that question. The first is I think of drop thumb as a way to escape the constant ringing of the fist string. So you can really shape your phrasing by letting go of that fist string note and dropping that thumb to inner strings. As you just saw, if we just have a double thumbing pattern, that's pretty enough, but if you add drop thumb, You can break up the sound of that fifth string, but still be activating eighth notes. So you don't have to rely on a quarter note, a bum brushy style pattern. To break up the fifth string, you can use that thumb on the fifth string and then deploy it on an inner string. And it has this beautiful way of rhythmically giving you a break from the constant firing of that fifth string. That's one reason why I think a drop thumb is super important in the player's toolbox. But there's a second reason, and maybe more important reason, and that is it allows us to get melody notes on our upstroke. So normally, if we are trapped in the double thumbing mode, that thumb stroke is happening on the fifth string, which is really sort of a drone string. If we can get that thumb to an inner string, strings two, three, Four, we can turn that upstroke from a drone and make it melodic. And this is incredibly, incredibly powerful. Let me make a sort of generic ending of a tune. That's my generic ending to a generic tune that I just made up in my head. But I can spice that up by using a drop thumb. All the downstrokes stay the same, but when I deploy that drop thumb, I'm adding a melodic note on the first upstroke, which drastically changes the way that phrase is being heard, being felt. So those melodic upstrokes are a huge way to add density to your melodic phrasing. And if you have any desire to play fiddle tunes, these drop thumbs are essential. You're going to need them to capture certain melody notes that are really part of the tune that you're trying to learn. All right, so we know what a drop thumb is. We know why a drop thumb is. Now let's figure out how to play it really well. Hopefully you're sold on the drop thumb. 
There are three things that I'm gonna teach you today that are gonna, it's gonna make your drop thumb really good. The first is to be in position ahead of time. If you are getting to drop thumb position just in time, you're already too late. You've got to plan ahead, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. One of the things I hear the most when players are learning how to drop thumb is their drop thumb, when they get to a drop thumb passage in a typical tune, their drop thumb kind of grinds them down to a halt, or it slows them down. You can feel this big hiccup in the groove, and you don't want that. You want the drop thumb to be just this transparent thing that just is crisp and erupts out of your playing. It's not a distraction. It's baked into your phrasing. So I'm gonna show you how to do that now. The single best way for you to approach drop thumb so it's not lagging behind, it's not feeling late, is to move into position during your previous upstroke. That if you get one thing out of this video, this is what I want you to get out. So let me show you what I mean. We're gonna invent a phrase. This phrase is, I'm in double C. This phrase is going to be diddy, diddy, drop thumb, diddy, 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 drop thumb, diddy. All right, so in order for us to prep that thumb on the upstroke before the drop thumb, we need to take that second ditty, one, now we prep, and by prep I mean move your thumb over the second string on the upstroke. Now when I downstroke, I don't have to do any thumb movement, I'm just tossing the thumb in. Again, let me show that to you, I'm gonna try to get over the black here and, and demonstrate that. Diddy, diddy, drop thumb, diddy, diddy, diddy. Watch the thumb, drop thumb, diddy. Again. So I'm prepping the drop thumb on the way up. I'm moving the thumb so that it's over my drop thumb string. So when I do my downstroke, it's just a matter of throwing in. Now, what I see a lot of people doing, and what you don't wanna do, is prepping the drop thumb on the way down. By then, if you're prepping your drop thumb on the way down, you're already too late. If you get any faster than the tempo I just played, you're gonna to start to feel that drop thumb as a slowing down point in your playing. It's going to stick out, for lack of a better term, like a sore thumb. We don't want that. We want our drop thumb to be integrated, crisp. We want it to be groovy. We want it to m keep the momentum of our playing going, not slow us down or cause hitches in our timekeeping. And the way to do this is to prep the drop thumb on the upstroke before the drop thumb. The second way to improve your drop thumb is to make sure you're getting actual purchase on the thumb string with the thumb. So instead of just cursorily just dabbing or dipping into the surface of those strings, I am throwing in deep. So I'm really using my momentum of my downstroke to get into those strings and getting enough pad of my thumb on there to really provide a grip. And that thumb string, our new thumb string, in this case the second string, gets activated by that thumb pad, and then on the way up, there's enough thumb pad to grab it and make a nice, big, hefty sound from that string. What I see a lot is when players are learning drop thumb, they're not really going into the strings to activate the string for the drop thumb. They're just sort of getting the edge of the thumb involved. And if you do that, you're just it's gonna be hard to collect the thumb string, our new thumb string on the way up, and it's gonna result in an anemic sound. So we need big purchase for any drop thumb, and this goes well with what we've learned on the fist string, right? We throw in on the fist string, and I say this all the time, we are, we are bisecting that thumb pad with that fist string. See how deep that is in the thumb pad. Because I want a lot of skin on that thumb string, so I can really grab that, grip that string and pull the string out with my upstroke and get a nice, big, robust sound. Same goes for drop thumb. I am throwing in as deep as I can go with, those, with that thumb. 
So the third way to level up your drop thumb is to let the upstroke and the rebounds of the string do the work for you. We've talked about this before. I have a video called The Dead Thumb Society. And that is, that is all about how we don't want an overactive thumb. For claw hammer, and this is really counterintuitive. It takes people a long time to learn this. For claw hammer, we are not plucking with the thumb. We're letting the thumb activate a string on the downstroke. And then we're pulling out, pulling the string out. It's being gripped by that thumb. The, the pad of the thumb, and we're letting sort of the rebound of that string do the work for us. It's not an active move. It's a byproduct of a strong upstroke. Does that make sense? We throw in on our downstroke, that string gets activated by uh, pushing down a little bit with the thumb. And then as we go up, the string comes along for the ride, the thumb wants to stay behind a little bit, and then the, the thumb can't keep hold of that string anymore, and the string snaps back and makes a sound. All from the fulcrum, this part of the instrument where I'm pivoting around and I'm pulling that thumb stroke out. Same is true for drop thumb. We throw in, we let the thumb activate, in this case, the second string, and then on our upstroke, we let that thumb peel off the second string and sound. I'm not actively plucking or depressing that string. It's just happening in the natural motion of a strong downstroke, big thumb contact, act, string is activated naturally, and then on the way up, straight out of the instrument, the, the string rebounds into the instrument and makes a beautiful big robust sound. All right, so exercises. Grab a banjo, let's go. We are in double C. We're going to do that ditty, ditty, drop thumb, ditty. I love that pattern for getting a player used to these concepts. Let's play it together. One, two, three, four. Ditty, ditty, drop thumb, ditty. Faster. One, two, three, four. Prep early. One more time. Let's go faster. One, two, three, four. Feel how that upstroke prep is getting more and more important the faster we go. Let's go faster. One, two, three, four. One more time. Let's go faster, one more time. One, two, three, four. time. Then we can take this idea and make it a little harder. We can do a drop thumb, drop thumb ditty, drop thumb ditty. It sounds like this. One, two, three, four. For this pattern, with every ditty, you are prepping for the next drop thumb. Think about that. Every single ditty in this drop thumb ditty pattern, you need to be moving that thumb over to the second string position on the preceding upstroke. Not during the downstroke, preceding upstroke. Let's go again. One, two, three, four. Drop thumb ditty, drop thumb ditty, drop thumb ditty. Stop, let's go faster. One, two, three, four, drop them, ditty. And out, let's
Let's go a little faster. One, two, three, four. And a little faster. One, two, three, four. So there you go. That is a claw hammer banjo drop thumb deep dive. Just keep this final thing in mind. All of the good behavior of a good drop thumb should line up with good behavior on a good normal thumb because they are essentially the same mechanic, just on a different string. And that goes back to my early video called There Is No Drop Thumb. A drop thumb is simply a ditty on an inner string. So if you can think of it that way, all of the attributes that you want in a good normal upstroke should be present with your drop thumb. I think the real trick is making sure you're prepping it in the right moment, which is the preceding upstroke. I think that is the biggest take home of today's lesson. All right, that does it for me today. I hope I see you over on Patreon. The Banjo Bootcamp starts on Monday. I'm super excited about it. It is called The Dreamer. We are going to have wild fun, and I'll see you next time on Banjo Quest. <laughs>